Dan Ives, let me just start with, with a comment from you sort of on Apple's performance after it crossed the $2 trillion mark. This was last August. It suddenly had expanded its P.E. in a way that Apple previously was not known for. And I think since then, on a split adjusted basis, Apple is up maybe five bucks, maybe seven. Is there a risk here with Microsoft that the same kind of trading uplift could happen and be a, a hangover for the stock for a while? Yeah, it's a great point, but I think it's different here with Microsoft because there's no regulatory overhang. And right now for Apple, that's about a $20 overhang in terms of from a regulatory as well as the epic lawsuit battle. And it comes down to cloud. I mean, it's really right now, this is the best way to play cloud Microsoft, still a third of the way through the sort of cloud transformational upgrade cycle. I think trillion dollar opportunity just on cloud alone over the coming years. That's why I view Microsoft, 325 is our price target. I think this is just sort of the middle innings of re-rating, but also it's all cloud growth and talents that we're seeing yeah. in the digital transformation. One more question, uh, Dan, I've, since you mentioned it, I am, I'm just curious. Why do you say that Apple has a $20 overhang from regulatory issues? How do you get to that number? Yeah, that's our view right now in, in terms of it. It's a little more than 10% overhang on Apple. You know, I think worries on the App Store, what that could do. What you know, If you look what's coming down the pike in terms of the Beltway in Brussels, and I do think the Epic lawsuit in particular, that's really shined the spotlight. Remember, we go back six months ago, Apple was tangential in antitrust, now definitely in the crosshairs. And I think right now that's a pretty significant overhang, $20 per share. Sure. All right, Dan Gallagher, let me turn to you then. Do you see any kind of regulatory overhang here for Microsoft? Because it just rarely, it's interesting how being forced kind of or or without being able to help itself, it fell out of the whole mobile phone revolution. It's actually benefiting from that because now it's not in any regulatory crosshairs or e-commerce ones. No one seems to care what it's doing in the cloud. <laughs> Uh, I think that's true for the moment. Um, you know, I think part of what I uh, wrote a couple of months ago was that, um, you know, with with nearing two trillion dollars then and the incredible success they've had over the last uh, several years, moving to the cloud um, and some of their other improvements like margins and that, um, I do think this raises the stakes for them um, in the sense of you know they have to keep putting up really strong numbers to keep this keep the stock going up, and I think. Uh, some moves they've been making lately run the risk of putting of getting them back in the crosshairs. Possibly, Such I really as? saw that last year when they flirted with going going after TikTok. Um, you know, in this in this really controversial deal that looked like a forced sale from you know with involving uh, the president at the time, and I think that would have brought them a lot of social network baggage um, and and those sorts of uh, and, and those sorts of like overhangs. Um, that didn't that didn't happen. I think that was actually good for them. You know, but as as they've been more vocal about uh, trying to get more regulatory pressure on their competitors like Google, um, and speaking out outwards about that, um, I do think they've run some risk now of like making people pay more attention to them. So, Dan Gallagher, here's one more question on this issue. You know, one of their biggest competitors in the cloud, which is the core business, obviously, is Amazon. Amazon, everybody loves to beat up on Amazon. Every state, every you know, political regulator, you know, consumers. I mean, you name it, right? But if Amazon is held back from its further ambitions and scale in the cloud or forced to divest to its businesses somehow, is that going to play right into Microsoft's hands? Uh, that's certainly possible. Um, I think right now a lot of eyeballs are on Amazon on their consumer side, um, you know, with, with bills about uh, potentially they should, they should break up, separate the third party from the retail arm. Um, and this, this deal to buy MGM is probably going to get a lot more focus. Um, I think those are easier things to draw political pressure because people understand those names really well. Whereas I think the cloud is still in this field where a lot of um, you know uh, you know politicians, leaders, and that don't fully have their arms around that. Mm -hmm. So I think if Amazon is constrained in some way, that that could help Microsoft. But Amazon also, I think you know I think they'll use a lot of their um, spotlight to say, hey, pay attention to these the right. our neighbors in Seattle because you know they. They were they were once a major problem too, and if you let it go, it could be another one. So I, I think I got I think we'll see a lot more tit for tat between the two companies because of that. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.